So for my current topic presentation, I chose to focus on older adults and wearable activity trackers. So I found this article on Science Daily and it was written on November 18th of 2019. And it includes research looking at inhibiting factors regarding older adults and the use of wearable activity trackers. So the article provided information on the frequencies of these activity trackers in the older adult population. And researchers featured in this article stated that the primary purpose of their study was to see how to better engage the older adult population to utilize these trackers as they do have the potential to benefit their overall health and well-being. And the purpose is summarized on the quote, which is on the left by Lin Lee, who led the study. So in the study, the researchers studied the long-term use of these activity trackers in adults that were 65 or older, and they looked at the various factors that they thought influenced the usage of the trackers, such as socioeconomic status, health status, and activity level. So the results showed that the older adults were more interested in functionality versus complexity, meaning that they were more intrigued by what the tracker could measure, such as heart rate, um, calories burnt, sleep time, or distance. Other factors that included usage, that influenced usage, included being female, being well-educated, exercising daily, and not having chronic health conditions. So ultimately, information from this article aimed to increase awareness of the potential benefit of these trackers within, within the older adults, as well as educate the younger generations like us about the older adults and their perceptions and their motives when it comes to exercising. So while, me, while we may use these trackers to um, compete against one another or just for its looks, older adults are more interested in function and exercising together as the quote on the right shows, which is by uh, another researcher in the study. So when I first saw these trackers, I was super interested to see how accurate they were and how they managed to gather so much information from just a little device. So when it comes to reliability and accuracy, a study done in 2016 by Stahl showed that their tested heart rate monitors in the trackers that they, that they tested had a 95% accuracy when compared to the criteria measure, which was a polar RS400 heart rate chest strap. And so therefore researchers concluded that these activity trackers can provide an accurate average. However, this study was done four years ago. So my guess is that technology has probably a lot from more accurate measures in the trackers that we use today. And the study was also done by El Amrawi back in 2015, which provided information as to how exactly these trackers are able to measure these physiological functions, as well as comparing trackers for accuracy um, at the time. So the study reported that the misfit shine, which is the picture on the far right, was the most accurate while the Samsung Galaxy 2, which is the picture with the blue strap, is, was, the most, was the least accurate. Um, they also said that calorie burning rate is typically measured through using Motion X technology and 3D accelerometers that identify movements and transform it to calories burnt. Sleep patterns are often measured through wrist movement and heart rate is tracked through embedded heart rate monitors which use a light to illuminate capillaries with the LED sensor that measures their frequency at which the blood pumps. So I don't know if you guys have Apple Watches or if you use them when you um, work out. If you look when you're working out, if you look just under it, there's like a green light that flashes. Um, so I guess that's what they use to measure heart rate. And you can see the green light in the top picture. So aside from the accuracy, a study done by Hannon confirms the idea of these activity trackers having the potential to increase physical activity. So this study specifically focused on the cardio rehab population and reported that those who used the activity trackers had an increased cardio respiratory fitness and also physio psychological benefits. 
So as demonstrated above through the multiple studies, these trackers do have the potential to impact physical activity. And physical activity, as we all learned, has many physical and cognitive benefits. So these activity trackers can increase awareness, uh, increase awareness of physical activity and physiological functions, which can allow them to engage in exercising more safely. So one area that is important for functionality within older adults is maintaining muscle area so that they are able to complete everyday tasks. So this is illustrated by the Patton-Jones curve, which is in the top left. And it shows that daily training can drastically alter the muscle mass decline that is associated with age. So um, specifically the type two fibers that are that normally deteriorate with age. Um, from a cognitive perspective, we learn that exercise can delay the rate of cognitive decline by stimulating blood flow and um, encouraging neurogenesis, which results in increased size and activation of the brain structures. So as you can see in the bottom left picture, the diseased brain is much smaller than the healthy brain. So in addition to the benefits physiologically, getting the older adults to make use of these trackers is a totally different story and it may require us to use some of our soft skills, such as being patient enough to explain to them how and why these trackers can be beneficial or understanding their motives and perspectives and knowing how to adapt to each person's um, history. So though these trackers can definitely benefit the older adults, they do have beneficial effects for everyone. So I think that for everyone, they definitely provide incentives, whether it be fitness-based or fashion-based. So while some may be motivated more by reaching fitness goals or trying to close all of our exercise or move rings, um, others are more motivated by um, what they look like or trying to keep up with the latest trend. Um, besides motivation, I think that society, especially the younger generations like us who are more technolo technologically savvy, um, we can do a better job of educating and providing more information to the older adult population. So the graph on the left shows that compared to previous years, the seniors are starting to engage and purchase more devices. However, being able to properly use them in order to benefit from them is a totally different story. So when I saw this graph, I thought that maybe the problem is not that these older adults aren't interested in devices and these trackers, but rather they don't have enough information to be able to use them to their full potential. So I think this sort of challenges society in general today because we are so caught up in trying to improve technology to make it more convenient for us. But I think we have to be cautious because if we add too much complexity to our devices, then it may demotivate the older population from engaging use in them. So the bottom right picture is an example of a physiolog, which um, measures, it's, it's an example of an activity tracker. So I wanted to show a video that kind of illustrates the potential of these trackers and how they can um, benefit all of us. Movement is essential in our lives, but it can be affected by trauma, disease, or aging. How about knowing who is safe or at risk? How about accurately quantifying how we move? At GateUp, we provide clinical-grade motion analysis with wearables. Motion sensor signals are usually hard to interpret. With Physilog, we turn those signals into meaningful data related to performance or disability. The Physilog is a wearable device featuring 9-axis inertial sensors, a barometer, and an optional GPS, coming along with advanced data fusion algorithms. It is easy to use. Just fix it, press record, 
and get the analysis report on your tablet or PC. Physilog is a fast and accurate tool to quantify human movement in real-life condition. This is essential for a variety of applications in sports and clinics. Running is very popular, but can also be very traumatic. Overpronation can lead to running injuries. With a physiolog, we can measure running in natural condition so that we can choose the appropriate footwear and the correct technique. Science has shown that gait speed and variability can be used as predictors of health, function, and falls in older adults. One of the advantages of the physiolog is that we can very easily measure gait speed and variability and identify a patient that needs specific attention or interventions. Currently we are assessing about uh, 10 to 12 patients each day uh, with very reliable measures. Lack of activity is known as the leading cause of preventable death. The barcode of physical activity is provided with physiolog data to visualize and quantify that risk. Barcode integrates information about the type, intensity and duration of body movements and activities. So we can understand physical behavior in everyday life and its relationship with healthy status. So the rest of the video just kind of talks about what they're trying to add to um, make it more accurate. But yeah, I just thought that that video was cool just to kind of see the potential of technology and how um, it can really benefit us. So that's all I have.